This is easily one of the best quartz watches you could get your hands on. It is a simple yet elegantly executed dial paired with a steel case that has an amazing fit and finish, which gives the watch a dressy yet sporty feel to it at the same time, as well as it has a great bracelet, sapphire crystal, solar power, multiband. So it really is a true set it and forget it style watch. And I think for a lot of you out there, it would be the perfect quartz piece. Uh, the trick, however, is actually getting your hands on it. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and today we're going to talk about the Casio Oceanus T200, which is a JDM exclusive. In fact, I think the entire Oceanus line is only sold in Japan, which is why it's so tricky to get one if you're not actually there. And especially in today's world where shipping and supply issues are more and more prevalent. There are some specialty sites out there that sell these, but I wanted to buy this one off eBay. If you've never heard of Oceanus, it's kind of like Casio's version of Grand Seiko, where it is their top of the line brand. Although while I believe there are some finishing techniques that are shared between Oceanus and Grand Seiko, Oceanus isn't quite on the same level as Grand Seiko in terms of quality. In fact, it's probably more equivalent to what you'd find with an Orient Star, which is still good, but more importantly, that means it's still affordable. But let's jump into this one and you can see what I'm talking about. First off, the T200 is a steel cased watch. And that is a little bit of a departure from many of the other popular watches from the Oceanus line, which are titanium. Casio also lists this as being 41.4 millimeters wide, but I think it is a touch smaller than that. So I'm gonna say this one is 41 millimeters wide without and 43.8 millimeters with the crown. You're also looking at a lug to lug of 49.2, as well as a total thickness of 11 millimeters. Now on the wrist, the watch is comfortable. The lug to lug here is slightly longer than I'd prefer, but it is relatively lightweight for a watch with a steel bracelet, as it's sitting right around 130 grams. So as lightweight as this thing is, and as thin as this thing is, the overhang on my seven and a quarter inch wrist is barely noticeable. Female end links would be preferable here, but overall it is very manageable and pretty comfortable, as it seems to hug my wrist nicely, and a lot of that is aided by the shorter links on the bracelet. As a whole, I'd say the wearability and the visual presence stay true to that 41mm width, which I think also further pushes this as a sports watch rather than a dress piece. Now, rounding out the specs, you have a 20mm lug width and a flat sapphire with AR. And the watch may also include a scratch-resistant coating on the case and bracelet. The key word there is may. When I was using Google Translate on Casio's site, it did list a titanium carbide treatment in the specs. But since I can't read this in the original Japanese, I'm not 100% sure on that. Now, at its core, the T200 beats a regular quartz movement. But it's not just any basic quartz movement. Since this is a Casio, you can be sure there's a few gadgety tricks up its sleeve. For one, the movement is solar powered, and that means you don't need to worry about changing batteries in the short term. It's also capable of utilizing both multiband atomic signals, as well as Bluetooth syncing in order to automatically set the time, ensuring its accuracy and usability. I also believe the movement has some sort of ability to correct its hand placement, just in case of a shock or some sort of magnetic field throws them off. Now, in regard to the Bluetooth functionality, it's primarily there just to adjust the time. The only other feature I've noticed is something that'll help you find your phone in case you lose it. Otherwise, that's about it. If you log into the app on your phone, it basically just shows you the battery level and a log of how often the watch has been corrected. So it's still a bit gadgety, but it doesn't have all those extra features that are arguably useless that a lot of other Bluetooth watches have. The finishing of the case is one of the watch's biggest strengths. It's just fantastic and really has to be seen, especially its sleek profile and just how the entire thing plays with the light. Everything here is sharply defined and the polished sections look amazing. And this is where I believe Casio uses a similar technique to Grand Seiko's Zeratsu polishing. Casio's edifice line is great, don't get me wrong, but one look at this watch and you realize that the Oceanus line is on a whole other level. 
From a design standpoint, I also really like the angular transitions and the slightly wider clean bezel, as I think both of those help to reinforce the casual sporty feel of the T200. There's also a slight blue hue to the sapphire crystal, right at the edge where it meets the bezel, and whether it's intentional or not, that hue acts as a great transition to the blue dial underneath. To the right of the watch, you have a smaller signed crown, which unfortunately isn't screwed in, as well as a push button just below that, and that's what you use to engage some of the extra features, like connecting it to Bluetooth. Overall, Casio did a fantastic job, both with the design and the fit and finish of the case. But there is one disappointing aspect to it, and it's something you see when you flip the watch over. If you haven't caught it already, you can see it right here, and that's that it has a snap-on case back. Now, I don't think anyone's really a fan of these, and longtime viewers know that I'm definitely not one. So for me, this is a big negative. But to be fair here, it does help give the T200 a flatter profile. And as this is solar, you should need to open it up and fiddle with it very often. So while it always annoys me to see a snap-on case spec, here I gotta admit that it is tolerable. From what I know, there are a couple different versions of the T200, but I think this dark blue is the most popular, as well as the most versatile. Regardless though, no matter which colorway you get, they all seem to have the same basic dial layout which is rather simple on the surface, but elegantly executed. The main dial area here is a deep, dark sunburst blue. At eye level, it's gorgeous, but when you zoom in, you can see that there's a very fine circular pattern to it. And occasionally in some of these shots, you will start to see that there's a solar cell underneath that dial. But in person, back at eye level, neither of those is very obvious. The solar cells only seem to show up with intense direct light, like what I'm doing here with studio lighting. And that circular pattern is so fine that it's almost invisible to the naked eye. Now, just under the 12, you have the Casio and Oceanus brand names, which are painted on in white. And having both of them there, I think, is a little redundant. One or the other would be preferable. Probably the Oceanus logo, as it is applied and has a little bit of a metallic sheen to it. Moving down to the lower left, you can see that there's just a little bit more of text here, and that's all associated with the extra features. Mainly just telling you if daylight savings time is on, or how it last updated the time, whether it used multiband or Bluetooth. So nothing really critical here, and this does distract from what is otherwise a nice, clean, and simple dial. So this is another negative, but I can attest that after a bit, you just kind of get used to it and you just kind of overlook it. Looking closely, you can see that the indices aren't actually attached to the main dial. Rather, they're connected to the chapter ring and then extend out and hover over that main dial, which helps give the watch a very interesting sense of depth. The sharp defined angles on the indices also look fantastic, and their metallic and reflective nature also makes them very easy to make out over the blue dial. There's also one more aspect of the watch that really loves to play with the light. The hands here are sword-shaped, but just like the rest of the dial, Casio did put their own twist on them. Instead of just going with your typical flat sword hands, Casio gave these a polished metal surface with a slight three-dimensional shape, where there's also a small amount of loom applied right down the middle, as well as including a very short counterweight for each hand. Then, to mix things up, as well as add a splash of color, Casio went with a second hand that has a striking blue reflective surface, and it's one that does match the Oceanus logo. Now, while the silver hands and indices are easy to make out here, there's not a lot of contrast between the second hand and the dial, with the exception of the white extended tip, and that is very easy to make out. But as the rest of it is metallic, it does reflect the light in a slightly different way than the dial, and that helps it stand out, I think, just enough. Over at the three, we have my only real nitpick, and that's with the date. I do like the framing around it, but I find the positioning and the white date wheel to be just a tad distracting. It's definitely not a deal killer, but I would have either preferred the date moved to the six, where it would balance out with the text and the logos, or either a color match date wheel to help it blend in. Now, all in all, the dial design of the T200 is gorgeous. One thing that I really like and appreciate here is how it seems so simple at first glance. 
Yet once you start to take a deeper look, you start to notice the beautiful complexity involved. Yet as gorgeous as this thing is, it still maintains a high degree of functionality, with the sharp defined metallic lines of the hands and indices standing out boldly against the dark blue background. I think Casio did a great job with the design, making a true go anywhere and do anything kind of watch. One that looks just as good dressed up as it does hanging out at a bar. And on top of all of that, it's a true set it and forget it type of watch. One you could easily set aside, and as long as it's getting a little bit of light, you can pick it up and go at any point later on. There's also one other kind of random thing to consider with this watch, and that is the Casio name on the dial. Which, I know how that sounds, but before anyone calls me a snob, just hear me out here. Personally, I'm perfectly fine with it, as I don't wear a watch to impress other people. When I wear a watch, I'm wearing it because I like it. But I'm mentioning it here because I have heard other people say this about Grand Seiko. That no matter how good a watch is or how good a watch looks, that the non-watch geek muggles out there just kind of focus on that Seiko part and don't pay attention to anything else. So if you happen to have a career where dressing the part and making an impression is important, that Casio name on the dial is something to consider. For everyone else, just have at it. And on the flip side, when your spouse happens to see that Casio name on the dial and you tell them it doesn't cost that much, they might actually believe you this time. Anyway, let's move on to the Loom, and Loom is fairly interesting on this one. As this is more of a sporty dress watch, it doesn't need a ton. But even with that, I gotta admit I was a little disappointed when I first saw this thing, as it's not very bright and there's not a lot of surface area here where Loom is applied. Basically, it's just on the hands and a small area on the chapter ring, right behind each index. However, that was my first impression. After spending more time with this, I realized that whatever magic concoction Cassio is using, it is good, and I mean really good. It's not overly bright, but it lasts. I mean, just watch this comparison test. I mean, it's definitely not a torch, but every aspect of it here, the dial in the hands, easily outlasts that Seiko Diver, making it very easy to read throughout the night. This was something I was not expecting, and whatever Casio is doing here, they're doing right. And it's something that I want to explore with other Casio watches as well. And I think the same could also be said about the bracelet. This is a good quality bracelet with solid end links, solid links, and a milled clasp. I'm not a huge fan of the shorter push-button design we have on the clasp, but I think it is keeping with the sport watch styling. And that's something I think you could say about the end link design as well, where the angular edges and the cutouts help it to look more casual and not like a simple three-handed dress watch. There's also a nice taper going from 20 to 18 before the clasp, and that does aid in the comfort of wearing it. There's only one aspect that I don't like, and that's that there's only two micro-adjustment holes. So, depending on your wrist, you may have to settle for close and not perfect when sizing it. Now, normally this is the part where I start to wrap things up and talk about value as well as give you some watches to compare this to, but I'm not going to do that here. Mostly because I don't know what this watch is going to be going for a month from now, let alone a year from now. With JDM models, it's fluctuating a lot. I know when I first started looking at these, these were in the 300s, but when I bought this one, they were up in the 4s and now there are some places selling them closer to five. So I think it's really hard to talk about value, let alone I can't really think of another watch to quite compare this to. It is an expensive quartz watch, but I think in a lot of ways it's almost the perfect quartz watch, and especially for a lot of you out there. It's a gorgeous looking piece that's well made with a true set it and forget it style system. Basically it does everything you want it to without all those extra features you'll never use. Not to mention, I think it's a perfect watch to recommend to your non-watch geek friends when they ask for your advice. For those that are looking for a really nice watch that isn't an automatic. Honestly, I could just go on and on about this one. I really love it and wholeheartedly recommend it, assuming you can find one at a price you're comfortable with. And that really is the trick here. For me, this is definitely a keeper. And the only way I could ever see parting with it is if I wanted to get another, maybe more expensive Oceanus. And there are a few that I'm looking at, but I think in the end, this is probably going to be the best one for me. 
But what do you guys think of the T200 Oceanus or the entire Oceanus line? Let me know down below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane. This is Relative Time. See you next time.